All right. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do with all this information? You know, you can get mad, but that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I left uh, Fox, because we have to be able to offer some solutions. So how do we relieve the pressure that has been building in our country, not just at the Occupy Wall Streets, but everywhere? My next guest has some answers. He has um, firsthand how to, uh, uh, how to tackle the hard issues information. He has made it his life mission to try to bridge radical divides and unify the country. Dr. Tony Evans, he's a senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas. I hear that's a great place to live. <laughs> and the president of uh, the Urban Alternative. How are you, sir? Delighted. Good, Good to, to be see with you. you. Neighbor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Welcome to Big D. Um, so, Tony, I wanted to bring you in because you are a guy who, um, I mean, I, I, if, I've ha if I have one more pastor or priest send me these books, I, I keep getting them, they're like, have you read these? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And they all are sent and saying, great stuff. You are a guy who, when the uh, state has troubled youth, they call you up and say, can, we, can you help? bridge the gap. Um, uh, you are active. It's not just a church. It's a lifestyle, right? Yeah, it's my life. It's my calling. It's my mission. And it uh, comes fairly simple because I believe there are two answers to every question. God's answer and everybody else's and everybody else is wrong. So once yeah. I start with the problem solver and the problem solution, I can go right and tackle it and save a lot of time and energy. Okay. So I, I think the time for talking is done. The time for, you, you've you got to not just stand against something, you have to stand for something. So wh how, where, do, where do we go from here? How do, you, how do people take the information that I just showed and then now do something about it in a positive way? Well, when you start with the understanding that the problem is spiritual, it just shows up in economics or shows up in politics or shows up in the social arena, then you go to the spiritual answer to the problem and then begin to apply solutions to it. So whatever the problem is, I find out what God had to say about it. Then I put systems in place to apply God's answer to that reality. You take, uh, you take Occupy Wall Street. The concern is greed. Well, a, a protester came to Jesus one day in Luke 12 and uh, he was concerned about the money due him not coming to him. And Jesus said, well, you got to watch out for all forms of greed because he said that greed's on both sides. Greediness on both sides. On one side, you can be greedy to want it. On the other side, you can get it illegitimately or not handle it properly if you have it. He says both sides are greed. So now that I have God's answer to that, I have the answer to Wall Street. So really, when, I mean, when you're, looking at, when you're looking at Wall Street, you will agree, as I will, that they're right. There are greedy people Absolutely. in Wall Street that have built the system They've taken capitalism and just turned it inside out into something ugly because of greed. But you're also saying that the people who are saying, take it from them, are also greedy? Absolutely, because Jesus said, a man, an employer has the right to decide what he does with his resources, and you can't complain against it if he got it legitimately and is using it properly. So again, God has given me the answer, so I just have to apply. God has another kingdom, and he has another agenda. My agenda. I call it the kingdom agenda, where he flushes out his rule in history. I'm the chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, uh, when the teams come out, they're in conflict. They're not there to get along. They're going in two different directions. In the middle of the field is a team of officials. They're not obligated to any of the conflict on the field. They belong to another kingdom, to Andy Park Avenue, that sets the guidelines for what happens on the field. They're able to bring calm to chaos because they're operating from a whole different orientation. We're operating on ground level, so we can't see the problem. Once you decide that God already has the answer, and then you simply apply it through your good works, you solve pro racial problems would have been solved a long time ago if we would have started upstairs and not started on the field of play. We are, uh, I have a segment coming up at the top of the hour where we have people who, um, we have people of many, many faiths being turned against each other. We are, in every step of the way, we're being turned against each other. Um, and then it gets to the extremes where we had that guy who called in on the radio program and he was saying, you know, uh, it's the Jews' fault, it's the Jews' fault. It's easier to blame somebody else. It's easier to, um, 
just just hate somebody else and join a join a crowd that says yeah get them again the problem is spiritual you see when ever you create disunity what you do is you remove God from the equation because he is a unified being by nature. So he will not function in a disunified environment. Therefore, the power of unity is the participation of God in the process. The exclusion of God is always tied to okay. disunity. So let's talk about, let's talk about some things that, um, that you're doing specifically. Tell me okay. some things that you're doing specifically that people could get involved with or take the idea to their church and say, this is... This is where I channel to fix things. Well, we started by adopting one school, one public school in Dallas, that was having problems, uh, truancy and violence issues. It turned around when our church adopted it. One school became 18 schools, 18 schools became 65 schools that we've now adopted, providing mentoring, tutoring, and family support services, social services, good works. Well, it's grown so big that now other churches want to adopt schools across the country. So we launched the National uh, Adopt the School Initiative, National Church Adopt the School Initiative. And we're going to try to get 2,000 churches to adopt 2,000 public schools because those are kids. Kids have parents. Church schools and families make communities. You can rebuild communities without creating anything new because the infrastructure for all three are already there. And you don't have to deal with the separation of church and state issues because you go in as a social service provider. Separation of church and state should never mean separation of God and good works. And so God's people so, can do good things so in what that do you do? arena. You go in and you adopt a school. What do you do? Okay. One lady to four girls, one man to four boys. Because a lot of these kids aren't doing well in school because of family breakdown. God said, I'd be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. He didn't mean a floating spirit in Never Never Land. He <laughs> meant it'd be surrogate parenting through his people. So now the kids have love and now the kids are being reinforced with, with, with life, then they are now going to function better academically. But now the church can also provide support systems to the families okay. who need them. So help, but help me out on this. Give me a specific example. The person okay. goes to your church and say, okay, I want to I want to I want to be involved in this. What are they doing? Okay, what what they do is they go through our one-day little training that we give and then they uh, we assign them to a school. The school will assign them four students that they meet with on a weekly basis and then individually uh, or no, together? as a group. As, okay. as a, yep. in a group, they can do it individually, one but usually four. as they get one or four and then the whatever the church's social service systems are that we can support with food or clothing or housing or job training or job placement we provide that for the parents of that child so we become a holistic provider we can do what the government can't do because we're closest to the need and so we do that as a church so the church does good works we do it in the name of our faith without forcing people to to join our church or anything mm -hmm. like that so we're doing good works and now we can't keep up with the schools begging us to come okay so now um and that's amazing um so help me out on this how do you I just had a, a discussion with my sister over the summer and and we go to different churches and and uh she got mad at me because I said, listen, she's on the, the charitable you know, arm or board of her church. Mm -hmm. And I said, she said, we have a hard time you know, to, to figure out. We have to be led by the Spirit on who we can help and who we can't. And I said, help those who help themselves. Help those who help themselves. Make sure that, the, that you are, you're, you're expecting something in return. And not, not, not in return, but that they're doing something, that they're not, you're not just giving, that you're not just creating dependency, and you're not just giving stuff away. Do you? Well, God never subsidize, subsidizes irresponsibility. Right. So you can't be irresponsible and then tell God to come and bail you out. That is to tempt the Lord thy right. God. Right, and that's what so I So you call for, for, for an action. Right, you change the behavior, whatever it is that got you into that. Absolutely. Change that behavior, otherwise we can't help you. God put it this way. He that hath will be given more. He that does not have, that which he has will be taken away from him. You have to do something with what you have for God to build on that. Okay, if somebody, if a church would be watching right now and they wanted to get involved, how do they, how do they get involved? They in simply that? call, uh, they simply log on to TonyEvans.org and uh, it'll take them to the National Church Adopt the School Initiative. How are and you, we have a training program that we can take them to. How are you getting by the... Um, the, 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 honestly, of it's not even just separation of church and state. This country is becoming so bigoted against faith and those members of God, unless you're Islamic, that you can't you can't get within a mile of somebody who even says God. Well, 
that may be true in some suburban communities. It's rarely true in the urban community because the church has been so uh, integral in everything that's happened in our community. We would not be where we are in urban America without the church. But now urban problems have now become suburban problems. And the breakdown of the family and the, the breakdown of the morals and the drugs and all of that. So when you have to put metal detectors up in your hallway, you don't want to talk about church and state. You want to talk about help. And so communities are opening up because we respect the boundary. We know what the boundary is without apologizing for who we are. It is, um, it's incredible to me. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why we moved to uh, Texas or we're moving to Texas um, is I, I haven't been around. I mean, I walk down the streets of New York and I hear language and it, my little kids there, language that is beyond uh, as my grandfather used to say, saloon language. Mm -hmm. um, you go down to Texas, and I hear more talk about God, real talk mm -hmm. about God, not people saying, "No, oh, I love God," and then you know they're going to the, you know, saloon. Right. But real talk about impact. There is a, there is a difference in parts of the country where God yeah. is actually practiced, not just talked about or chased out. Well, absolutely. Where you're located, the influence of the church, the, the well-being of the culture is tied to the influence of the church. When the church, you know, when the, when the levees broke in New Orleans, uh, the, the city was flooded because that which was designed to hold back that which would bring damage was no longer up. When the church is not doing its job, the culture sinks. And that is why the issue is spiritual at its core. And that is why dealing with the spiritual underpinnings is key to dealing with the economics, politics, education, or whatever people, it happens to be. People, um, 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 People go to church, uh, you know, when I was going to church uh, many years ago, um, uh, I was going to a church that didn't, it was like out of obligation almost. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't going and I wasn't getting anything to apply in my real life. Now I pray that I can make it to Sunday mm -hmm. to get refilled. Um, but it's not just, it's not something that's for Sunday. It, it really is active. Well, it, yes, the whole idea is that the church is to equip you to be the person you were created to be under the rule of God. Civil government, church government, and family government is all designed to make better self-government so that you govern yourself properly in how you think, how you act, how you talk, how you walk. When those governments fail in producing proper self-government, you have chaos in society. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> Name of the uh, name of the book is The Kingdom Agenda and Oneness Embraced. Um, I will be seeing you again. My Look friend. forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, back in just a minute with um, I don't know who you keep seeing these. Back in just a minute with something that a story that I heard coming out of um, supposedly the Vatican that the Pope really the Pope is for one world government. Can that possibly be true? The answer, I don't think you've heard anyplace else coming up.